Hi, welcome everyone, and especially a warm, a very warm welcome to our fourth edition of the fantastic talk, and especially the first one in the new financial year 2021-22. You know, new financial years are always very exciting for us because you know we have a new year where we make resolutions about ourselves, and it is the new financial year where we make our new financial resolutions. So let the resolution for all in each and every one of us be for this year be that we have to together we have to create wealth, and you know, and wealth journey starts only when you start running the race. So you know, a lot of people are sitting on the side yards and they are waiting for this race to start. They are waiting to start their investment journey, and they are never starting their investment journey. So friends, unless you participate in a race, you can't win. and when you start running in the race as they say aim for the stars at least you'll reach the moon so it is very important for us to start this journey on wealth creation so those of you who are investing please keep do keep investing don't be bothered about the absolute uh, market or the absolute index value we'll explain that today and those who are waiting on the right side for the right time there is never a right time there it is always the right time to enter the market as long as you do it systematically in a planned manner and you invest the right funds and the right stocks and when you do that even if you come in at the top of the market you will still have an opportunity to make money because there are always winners and the whole aim of this is to help you find uh, the winners you know india has gone through a huge transformation and one of the things we saw was lacking the investment uh, investor education and you know me as uh, you know running one of india's largest wealth management firms so although we have, we have thousands of advisors who come and advise clients like you and other people who in their investment journey but what we realized that for you to win in this journey you need to have the basic knowledge and the basic fundamentals there because only when you understand the fundamentals can you get a person to guide you if you are too naive then somebody will take you on the wrong path and that's that's the most heartbreaking thing that we know that uh, you know if you remain invested in the market for 10 years 98% of you will make money but only 14 or 15% end up making money because they either panic they move out or somebody gives them wrong guidance or advice so it is very very important to build your fundamentals for which we have launched a program called fantastic if you don't have the basics do join this fantastic program it is a 15 day program which teaches you right from budgeting financial planning principle goal uh, prioritization understanding why you want to invest understanding equities direct stocks insurances everything you need to do to uh, you know to make yourself as a business or your investments like a business and we have a very unique money back guarantee there that you come join the program first week if you don't like it you can take your money back there will be no questions asked because our purpose is not to earn money from you but our purpose is to get you started on your investment journey to get you started on becoming a path to becoming a crorepati through investments or if you are already a crorepati then why not a billionaire through investments or a 100 crorepati through investments so and uh, in this fantastic talks i try to bring in people who i feel can add value to their uh, journey you know before i talk about our speaker today you know there's a very interesting book by james cars which is called the finite and the infinite games so it talks about the, one of the fundamental things it talks about is approaching life like a game you know and they are finite games they are games working towards a target or a goal i want to achieve this goal and i want to do this and there is an infinite game where we are playing the life as a game with no end in sight but we are enjoying the journey so both have their own advantages and disadvantages but when you are playing an infinite game when you want to enjoy every uh, part of the moment then learning and education is very very important and then you must keep upgrading yourself because as you keep upgrading yourself you keep becoming a better version of yourself the life becomes more exciting because you start understanding more and it's a much more interesting journey to be at so guys please do start playing some part of infinite games also and uh, today we are very very pleased to have with us sunil singhania he is one of india's most coveted fund managers and we will talk to him about not only his uh, investment philosophy but his life journey 
you know he has done tremendously well he was the man who's one of the key uh, corner stones behind building uh, reliance nippon life amc as one of india's best amc is known as one of india's best stock pickers one of india's best value pick picker finders one of the person who's able to identify the next generation of winners and now in his new role he's an entrepreneur he started his own abacus a uh, mutual fund uh, abacus uh, uh, pms fund management and he's already reached 4000 crores in assets which is a fantastic fantastic achievement in the short time that he's done it and let me welcome uh, sunil and sunil it's great to have you so my Thank first you question to you okay, is that uh, you know before we get into the investment journey or you know this we want to understand sunil singhani as a person so why don't you tell us a little bit about your childhood your education and that part of your life and then we take it on from there sure no thanks sanjeev and you know very well said uh, thanks everyone for joining in uh, unfortunately you know we are finance people and we are very boring people so our uh, life is not as enterprising as a sportsman or a, or a actor would be but uh, i have been in mumbai all my life i have uh, grown up uh, born and grown up in mumbai though i am a marwadi from my ancestors are from rajasthan i was always in mumbai studied in a convent uh, you know middle class background my father was uh, with the birlas for 50 years he was working with birlas and very you know typical uh, post independence uh, middle class family studied in a convent joined college uh, did not want to pursue the sciences field because my elder sister was a science student and i used to see her dissect uh, earthworms and frogs and it, it used to put me away so i was very clear i wanted to do something which was not science and that time sanjeev if you know there were only two options either you pursue science or you pursue commerce arts typically was for girls you know at that point of time that was that was a very simple life so i pursued commerce and uh, you know as every commerce student i decided to take up ca uh, luckily i was a good student and became a chartered accountant with an all india rank very early in my life i was only 20 years old uh, so in fact i had to wait because the ca institute does not give you the certificate till you are 21 so i had to wait for a few months to get my certificate and uh, you know very logically my uncle was a chartered accountant so i started uh, working with him as a practicing chartered accountant one thing i just wanted to add equity was always my interest so even when i was in college with modest 500000 rupees i used to apply for ipos and i remember i got a, uh, an allotment uh, that time it was a lottery even now it is but that time more so i got an allotment in a company called godrej gujarat innovative chemicals or something you know and suddenly that uh, 500 rupee became 5000 rupees overnight and it was a big kick you know so uh, frankly you know the money gives you a higher kick than anything else and i think that that uh, increased my uh, my you know interest in the equity markets so even when i was practicing i was always interested in equity markets i used to read balance sheets even at that point of time and though people find the balance sheets boring it is something which i thoroughly thoroughly enjoy and i was anyway a voracious uh, reader because you know i was a little bit more academically inclined so i practiced i think the practice uh, was good because uh, it gave me a, a hands on exposure to financials to companies to taxes uh, but you know heart was always in equity markets so in mid 90s when the economy started to open up uh, nec came into being and that time i got an opportunity because there was one rich gentleman who wanted to become an nsc broker but he needed someone to give an exam because unless you pass the exam you wouldn't get those coveted membership and he thought that i was a smart kid and he, <laughs> he told me to give the exam on his behalf i gave the exam we got the card and then he offered me to join the business so i think i i joined the business or i i would say i joined equity markets Uh, which was more like uh, i would say uh, you know just it happened and i think that was actually the start of uh, of my really becoming very interested in equity markets uh, i also then in 97 moved to a broker who was more uh, institutional uh, institutional focused broker so most of our clients were foreign investors and uh, mutual funds that time mutual fund was small and i think that period was actually the period where my research got really polished 
and uh, you know sanjeev very very funnily no one used to read balance sheets till maybe 5 7 years back and i think that created a sort of a weekend express way you know you had an express way and no one was driving the car which you were sitting in uh, and it made things easy uh, but it was also a very difficult time so the initial after the dot com boom you had the worst recession between 2001 to 2003 where you know nothing was working and stocks in india were so cheap and when i used to go to my clients and present to them stock ideas no one is to buy them at even 2p 3p and that time i decided that i want to become a buyer of stocks rather than hawking my ideas so you know i was very clear i wanted to get on to the buy side as i said luckily most of my you know clients were mutual funds uh, so i reached out to reliance it was the smallest mutual fund 35th out of 35 mutual fund total equity size was 35 crores but you know reliance always came out as a, as an entrepreneur driven organization and there was this this charm and i joined uh, madhu was already there uh, one thing which we believe that time which we still continue to believe is that india grows because of entrepreneurs and despite the government and that is the stock we focused on i think in 5 years from being the smallest asset management company we became the largest asset management company funds run by us were uh, one of the best in india Uh, Reliance Growth Fund, which I used to manage uh, by 2017, had become 100x. Uh, so the fund grew like 100x. A crore invested became 100 crores. I also did my CFA that time uh, uh, while I was uh, working. Uh, became uh, the first president of the CFA India Society. Also became the first Indian to sit on the global board of CFA. Uh, 2020, I also became the first Indian to sit on the Capital Market Advisory Committee of of uh, IFRS. i'm telling you this because other than the profession i was also involved in a lot of other activities and it helps i was the president of goregaon sports club which is a sports club i think these things you know uh, make you uh, i would say a better person apart from being a better professional but anyway 2017 after i had become the cio equities uh, i decided that all my life i was always uh, uh, always uh, backing entrepreneurs and here i was chickening out becoming an entrepreneur and i should become an entrepreneur spend the next 10 15 the last 10 15 years of my active professional life as an entrepreneur and 2018 apex was born uh, and i think it's been a fabulous journey thanks to you know friends like you have supported us thanks to our investors and thanks to my team who have gen- uh, uh, you know worked hard to generate returns i think personally i like uh, uh, you know movies uh and though i like even hollywood movies the the charm is always in bollywood you know that can not be better thing than hollywood and i also like sports though i stopped playing cricket uh, uh because i have a back issue but uh, sports have always fascinated me i'm a part time uh, guitar player also not very good but i enjoy it so it's it's pretty fine i have a loving wife two kids one kid is in the us uh, 23 year old finished his ms in computer science working with amazon and daughter who is right now with me because it's study from home uh, so that's about it <laughs> no that's superb uh, sunil it's uh, great to hear about your family and i have known you for such a long time and uh, till today till my team had not done the research <laughs> about your family i actually didn't know about your family and it's so good that you have shared it i think this is the first time on a public forum you have talked about your love for guitar or your love for cricket or your children or your wife so that, that that's uh, no one asked me before you sent you no one asked uh, me before <laughs> <laughs> no, but, yeah so uh, and that's actually true you know so for me you know these talks are more about us as people also because you know when you back a fund manager or you back somebody you're backing a person at the end of the day you know active fund management is all about backing a person today we are living in a quant world there are a lot of quant funds coming there are a lot of index funds there and i will get into this question with you because you know this is this is a major competition that is coming up to human uh, fund managers but one of the things i have taken away and which is something my father also taught me that you know success in life is 99% hard work and 1% luck and people say that 1% luck we can't see but he always used to tell me you can see that 1% luck that is the ability to work for the right companies so if i look at your uh, life as you said ke look uh, that you joined a stock broker because he wanted a smart boy who could pass the exam that was the first level of luck second level of luck is when you move to an institutional brokerage 
which taught you research trying to do investment and you know for me that was also my background you know my first job was an on an institutional brokerage where we were doing research and trying to understand the stock i shared this to last time right. so i was doing a cement industry analysis so they told me that you know we want you to go and visit the cement plants and i was very excited i said yeah yeah sure <laughs> what i didn't realize was that all the cement plants are bloody middle of nowhere and at the end of the day at that time there were no hotels so you had to go and stay in a bloody shady <laughs> uh, guest house with so many mosquitoes and you know it was it was a really scary experience but it also also a very exciting experience where you sent in you you went in and you saw the industries you saw the processes you tried to take a call on winners and when somebody backs you by putting their money behind you that gives you a lot of responsibility so and then then you chose the reliance although that was a baby but you believed in them you believed that that would give you a right platform so you know my you know there are a lot of people who had asked this question how do i build a right career so guys for you i want to say choosing the right organization is very very important you know as yeah. because if you don't choose a right organization you will not get the right results you need an organization which will give you the ability to flourish it will give you the ability to grow and then also take the second cue you have to take from sunil is that don't live in your organization live in the industry so like he did the cfa he he was a part of the industry bodies live in your this thing today we have a brand called i you know i would like all of you to be active and even i have started this very late where i have started being active on my twitter account maybe 3 months back i have start, started being active on my linkedin about one and half two months back but i truly believe that it helps people understand and see you as a human being what do you believe in what do you what do you stand for and this is something that we all of us have to uh, do this so you know there are a lot of interesting questions also coming in although uh, sunil i had decided to take the questions later but let's do take up a couple of question there is a gentleman asking that i want to start my investment journey how do i start my investment journey i know it's a very basic question but it's also a very difficult question and because you know a lot of people just keep waiting on the side so uh, you know how do they start their investment journey what would you like to say uh, sunil on that so uh, you know a lot of uh, experts have said that the best time to start investing is today uh, so you know first of all when you are looking at an investment don't wait you know you have to start immediately second is uh, you know i always say this that uh, you know if you are an equity investor in investing in india you have to have confidence that india will grow and you know that is i would say 100% work done you don't have to bother about anything else because this near term uh, you know roadblocks challenges will keep on coming but if you are clear that you want to start investing today and your equity and your investment is in an instrument where you have confidence from a 20 30 years perspective you can't go wrong third is have goals you know and i'm talking out from a retail investor's perspective you know you have you have to have goals that what is this investment for whether it is for one year whether it is for five years it is for 10 years and 20 years i think once you have that goal that this is for you know my child's education this is for some house build uh, uh, house i want to buy or this is for my retirement then again you will be able to you know have a longer period of time and also put the amount which will get you to the goal but the basic thing would be don't wait for your investment to start today is the best time to start hmm. yeah so that's very very well said that you know if you keep waiting in the line you're not going to win the race till you have to start uh, you know running the race and there is don't look at the absolute market so sunil uh, before we get into the market we had created a creative to show the the journey of this market so i'll request our back end team abhin please if you can play play that that shows the the growth of the indian stock market because there is a very interesting question i want to ask after that
Yeah, so if you look at it, uh, you know, you look at that graph, the reason I wanted to show you that there were a lot of points and there were a lot of places where people said, now this is it, market is overvalued, it will not go beyond this, you know, this is this is enough, this is the maximum that it will go to. But if you keep seeing the market has kept on going up, it has kept on giving returns and the people who have been sitting on the sidelines or who, people who got scared, because they were definitely falls in the middle also, have actually got left behind. So guys, one is that don't get left behind. And now comes my interesting question, Sunil. India has seen a tremendous growth in the last 70 years. And in 2019, you made a very interesting comment, which has actually got stuck on my mind, that in the next 10 years, we'll see more wealth creation happening in India in the next 10 years than we have seen in the last 70 years. Now, wow, that, that's that's some, that's something huge. Do you still believe in it? And why don't you just tell us about it? And I would like to understand more about it. I'm sure every investor here would want to understand that, uh, you know, is the next 10 years going to be huge value creation in India? How do we ride that journey? And uh, how, do we, how do we make the best out of it? So, you know, one uh, on a lighter note, Sanjeev, you know, we always try to find reasons why other investors have made it big and they have not been able to make, make it big. So, you know, I, I come across investors, he says, you know, 90s was a great time to invest. I wish I was there. And then some investors say, oh, dot com time, it was the best time to make money and now we are left behind. But anyway, coming to this, uh, 1947 is when India got its independence. From 1947 to 2007, which is a period of 60 years, we reached a trillion dollar in economy. So it took us 60 years to reach one trillion dollar in the economy. The next one trillion to two trillion took us only eight years. So by 2015, we were at two trillion dollars. So you know what took us 60 years, the same we were able to achieve in the next eight years. As we speak, we are just over after 70 years of uh, independence, uh, over two and a half trillion dollar in economy size. Even if we are able to grow at 10% per annum in, real, in, in nominal terms, if you grow at 7% real, at 3% inflation, 10% in nominal terms, we will be $5 trillion in the next 10 years. So basically the wealth which you have created in 72, 73 years since independence, the same amount of wealth is going to be created in the next 10 years. Now, if you are an optimist, you would say, no, it will be in 8 years. If you are a pessimist, you will say it will be in 12 years. Doesn't matter. I think the fact of the matter is that what has been created as a country in the last 70 to 73 years, the same amount of wealth is going to be created over the next 10 to 12 years. And I think that is what any investor should keep in mind. I think there is no, no doubt in anyone's mind that this will happen. Doubt can be in one or two years here and there. And I think that is what the opportunity is, you know. And again, I'm, uh, you know, at least uh, uh, there is a disclaimer that I've always been positive, but that positiveness has helped me. By being positive, I've ensured that I don't, don't get hassled by all the red dots which you saw, which was a scam and it was Lehman Brothers and it was COVID. And you continued and then you got the benefit of all the huge uh, bars and the, and the yellow dots which you got. But uh, I think India is uh, slated to grow at least 7%. And uh, that would, you know, it's a mathematic. You will make as much money in the next 10 what you made in the last 70. So India is actually seeing a power of compounding. You know, we on all investments, we talk about power of compounding. So as a nation also, we are seeing the power of compounding that whatever good work has happened. So just uh, Sunil, uh, there are a lot of fresh investors here. Why don't you tell them about And, uh, you know, your example of Indian economy should about the power of compounding. But, uh, you know, as, as an investor being in this market, being in this market in, for the long run, you know, a lot of people have said, look, I've heard about Warren Buffet. I've heard about him. I'm never going to be as rich. But, uh, you know, but you can always be a great stock picker and they will always be a new Warren Buffet. They'll always be next generation. So uh, just inspire them, telling them about uh, the power of compounding and what is possible, provided you'd start, you start doing this and you keep doing this for the next 30, 40 years. No, I think, you know, the, the biggest impact of compounding is felt after a few years. So, you know, it's, it's very simple to say, you know, investors come. Uh, unfortunately, equity investors expect 50% return every year. 
uh, and I jokingly say that your money is lying in a fixed income. It's making four and a half percent or sadra hai, but we don't uh, uh, you know mind it. But here we want to make uh, double our money every month, which is not going to happen. But very simple, you know, if, even if you are able to invest logically, you know, like Reliance Growth Fund, when we used to manage, it gave a compounding return of 22%. But that made it 100x in 20 years. You know, so 100x in 20 years, people will say, wow, but it is 21, 22% compounding uh, return. You know, if you grow your money at 18%, you double every four years. You know, so in 20 years, it will be like 2 raised to 5, which will be 32 times. Uh, and I think that is what uh, compounding is all about. The other thing is, uh, you know, even Warren Buffet's Warren Buffet after 20, 30 years, because of the compounding effect, if you see his returns, they have been like 20%, 12%, 10%. It's not like he's made 100, 100% return five, six years. It's been bits and pieces and it just got compounded and compounding. And I think that is where you are. So I think from a retail investor's perspective, one is we cannot go from zero to Warren Buffet in one year. Uh, but we have to start somewhere. Uh, and I think I, 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 I don't think every one of us can be Warren Buffet, uh, but we all can do justice uh, and have a second source of income, which is through our investment. You know, so one source of our income is our daily job. I think the second source of our income should be the investments which we need. And I think over a period of time, the second source of it, uh, your income would be much higher then your primary source of income because of the power of compounding. Very well said, uh, this thing. So there is a question by Vivek. Uh, you know, the, thank you for this interesting uh, creative. So, uh, you know, I have to give kudos to the team. We were talking about Warren Buffet and they've shown how his wealth has grown. And, you, and this whole chart shows the power of compounding. That even Warren Buffet wasn't built in a day. But, uh, you know, but if you remain invested and you keep invested and you keep, uh, you know, on top of your investments, then one day your second income is going to become bigger than your first income. And you have to, guys, this is also very, very important for everyone. Like we just invest in our business or our job. We have to understand all sources of income have their ups and downs. So like job, jobs, we saw COVID, it happened. A lot of people took salary cuts. Some people even lost their jobs. And some people were absolutely fine and some people made money. So point is that there will always be ups and downs in life, but you must have a second income. You must have a second source of, of earning and that is your investments. And investments need to be looked at as, as a business. So that is why I say, look, you do any business, like you have to do your CA, CFA, whatever. You have to also learn investing. Please, please don't make that mistake of just jumping in. So if you are good enough, you can do a CFA, please do CFA. There is a question, uh, Sunil, I would like to answer that who should do a CFA? Does it make sense for a CA to do a CFA? So please do answer that. But sure. uh, but uh, also, uh, but at the same time, what I would like to say, basic, basic fundamental knowledge of investing in a structured manner rather than just reading from here and there is, is very, very important and uh, which we need to have. So, you know, so uh, maybe this is the last uh, general question and then we get into more, uh, you know, investment uh, centered question. So just tell us about CFA, CFP, what do you feel, how important it is and, uh, you know, or, or a basic investment program that upper people should do. So, uh, you know, what do you feel about that? Sure. So, you know, one is, uh, again, my view would be biased because I'm a chartered accountant, but I would say that there is no course like a CA anywhere in the world. And it's the most cost effective uh, designation to have. It uh, enables you to have three, four years of actual practical training. Uh, because when you're doing articleship, you actually work. I don't think any course in the world will have that kind of a rigor. And it, it basically ensures that your foundation is very strong. And once your foundation is very strong, everything else is an add on. Now, coming to CFA, CFA by the very name is Chartered Financial Analyst. So a chartered accountant is basically more, you know, trained to know about the accounts, know about the acts, know about company law. I think Chartered Financial Analyst is one step ahead where you are 
taught to analyze the accounting statements. So a chartered accountant makes the accounting statements. A chartered financial analyst is taught how to analyze the accounting statements. And I think if you are interested in anything to do with investment banking, with uh, uh, research analyst, being a fund manager, being a portfolio manager, I think CFA would be a good add-on. CFP, again, by the very nature, is chartered financial planning. So I would say that, uh, you know, uh, chartered financial planning will have a little bit of a different characteristic because it will, it will obviously need you to know more about investments, but it would be more about a very holistic view about planning, about uh, risk uh, management, about, you know, goal setting. Uh, so I think if you, if you intend to be uh, like a, a financial planner or a IFA, uh, finan you know, independent financial advisor or a wealth manager, or a relationship manager, maybe CFP is for you. If you intend to be an analyst or a portfolio manager, uh, the CFA is a, is a great add-on. But I would say there is no better designation than CA uh, because it really, really strengthens your foundation. Yeah. So there is also a very interesting question by a person that how do I lose the risk of losing money in stock market? So then that is a lot of people, you know, I have a very firm view there, but I would first like you to answer, then I would like to come in and, uh, you know, just put in my own views on that. So one is uh, taking my interest in Bollywood and everything, I would start with the dialogue of scam, risk hai to uh, You know, unless there is risk, there is no return. Uh, and risk doesn't mean that you are playing a lottery. Uh, you know, uh, risk is a calculated or a understood kind of a phenomena uh, which you will have to take to generate returns. And the other thing is, you know, in equity market, if you are diligent, if you are focused on good stocks, on good investments, then risk can be equated to volatility. A lot of times we believe that volatility is risk. Volatility is not risk. You buy a stock at 100 rupees, it goes down to 90 if you are confident that 100 is going to become 200 in four or five years. But because that 100 has gone to 90, we think that it is risky. It is not risky, it is volatile. So I think uh, unless you have, I would say, the patience and courage to see a mark to market loss in the near term, you cannot and you shouldn't be an equity investor because you will make all the wrong decisions. You will get scared at the wrong time and you will get greedy at the wrong time. Uh, but uh, you know, you should be prepared for a 15-20% uh, drawdown uh, whenever you are an equity investor. Uh, but just again to repeat, volatility is not risk. Risk is buying something which you don't understand. You know, some uh, hot IPO comes in and you buy it just because some great name has bought it or some, uh, you know, friend has recommended it or you get a tip. I think that is risk. That is not volatility, that is risk. So one has to be very clear uh, between the distinction between risk and volatility. Uh, but you know, if you can't bear the thought of a small market market loss, you should not be in equity markets. Yeah, and plus, uh, you know, I like to say that look, as uh, Sunil very rightly said, equities are not risky. It is investing without knowing why you are investing is what is risky about it. Yeah. So if you invest in a company which is overhyped or it is over pumped up or it is a penny stock, that's where you have a chances of losing money. But if you are invested in a blue chip stock and if you are risk averse, today you can invest in one of the largest stocks in the world. Now that company may come down by 10, 15, 20 or even 30 percent, but it's not going to go anywhere. And eventually it's going to bounce back. It is going to be growing. So it is only when you get into the small cap, mid cap or micro caps, that's where you have to be careful. And there, that's where you need to depend on good fund managers and you need to good, choose good, first, good, choose good uh, mutual funds or PMSs and, and, uh, and stop being penny wise, pound foolish. Okay, look, I want to be a direct investor or I want to be an indirect investor. I'm being smart. I'm saving half a percent. No. If you have the right advisor, you have to pay him. So point is that, yes, one, you have to find a person who you feel is worth paying for. And that is the person who keeps you on your journey. He is the person who does the research for you. He's working at you at a fraction of a cost on a pure variable basis. And you have the right to fire him anytime. But then he's going, he's the one who's going to add value to you. 
So guys, it is very, very important to choose the right partner with you on this journey. And, if, and then take a decision basis on your risk. If you are a risky person, then you can probably do small cap, mid cap. And even there, I would invest, go through our funds, go through a lot of diligence or be very careful of your pick. But when you are picking up a blue chip or a great or a large stocks, today 85% of India's profits are made by 10 to 15 companies. So if you are investing in those companies, those companies are not going anywhere. They're going to grow and you're going to grow along with them. So Sunil, also now the next question is in that uh, given that the market has risen so much in the last one year, people are concerned about the next 10 years. What kind of returns can they expect from stock market in the next 10 years? What is And if they were to invest in a backers, what, what kind of returns should they expect? So one is I have worked in a, a mutual fund for a long time and therefore I have by hearted that saying, you know, past returns are not an indication of future returns. <laughs> so that is a disclaimer. See, I think uh, what are, uh, how, how do we get returns from equity markets? It is basically growth in profit. So if a company's profit grows by 15%, logically the return would be 15%. Yes, in the near term, your PE multiple might contract or expand and therefore in the near term, the return might not mimic exactly that. But ultimately over a period of time, the economy size and the market will go hand in hand. You know, so if today we have a, a almost three trillion dollars of economy, our market cap is also almost three trillion. So it is said that one is to one is a good ratio. You know, in hype it goes above that. In in bearish time it falls to even sixty percent of that. Now look at the economy. You know, we have been growing at the rate of seven seven and a half percent for the last ten years. Yes, last two three years have been. Uh, disappointing because we had demon and then we had GST impact and then before we recovered we had this COVID impact. But it is logical to uh, to basically uh, you know forecast that India would grow at least six and a half seven percent. There is a possibility that we might go even faster because you know last seven eight months the government has been a very transformed government. We have been taking a lot of steps which are going to push the uh, economy growth. And as I said, if you add even three percent inflation, you are going to grow as an economy at 10% on a uh, nominal basis. Now add 2-3% from corporates by way of efficiencies or by way of portfolio selection, you have profit growth of good corporates at anywhere between 12 to 14%. And our view is that that kind of returns we can expect from the equity markets over a period of time. Obviously, uh, if you are in very, uh, you know, large companies the growth rate or the return expectations might be lower we believe that large caps over a period of five to ten years can give you anywhere between eight to ten percent return but the broader market which is where the growth can be faster the new sectors are coming up uh, the faster growing sectors are coming up and where there is under investment those can grow anywhere between 13 14 percent or even 17 18 percent you know, and I think uh, at Abacus, what we try to do is focus on companies where profits can double at least in five years. And, you know, that is basically our expectation is that if profits double in five years, there is no reason for us to believe that, uh, you know, the returns will also be double in five years. So that is the aim and that is the target which we work with. So, uh, Sunil, how do you go about doing your research? Is it only theoretical sitting there or do you go and meet the companies? So how do you go about selecting the companies that are going to be a part of your Abacus portfolio? So one is, you know, what I have learned is that uh, India is a country with a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of listed companies. You know, we have almost two, two and a half thousand companies which are traded regularly, almost thousand companies which can be investable at different points of time. We have exposure to almost all sectors. So, you know, unlike Brazil, which is maybe only oil and gas or only commodities or China, which is predominantly public sector or Russia, which is only oil and gas. India has everything. We have oil and gas, we have metals, we have manufacturing, we have services, we have banking, we have IT and everything. And I think that basically means that there are more opportunities, but at the same time, we have to do more work. So the first thing is that the large broking companies will only have 70, 80 companies under their numbers. If you want to do more companies and look at more companies, you have to have a very strong in-house team. So the first thing which we did at Abacus was to create a very strong team. At this point of time, we have 11 members on the investment side. We track almost 350 companies on our own. Second is, uh, you know, experience counts. So between our team and between myself, we have almost 110 years of researching Indian companies. 
and again luckily you know because i have been in this field for like 25 years i have met almost all the promoters at some point of time you know so there is already a history uh, what we do is we have a 5d process so you know one is the discovery mechanism discovery can be multiple ways you know you keep on meeting companies in conferences one on one you have history you have some sector view and you also do some you know screeners on the basis of it's like you know 6 months back we ran a screener uh, companies which had done capex but that capex had not come into commercial production so the moment that that capex comes into commercial production you will have a big jump in pnl uh, and you can have a big jump in profit or you know we did a screener where companies which had the largest payouts of interest and if interest rates were to fall sharply these were the companies where there will be a big jump in profitability and then you know you delve deeper into it meeting the company is a must unfortunately in this covid time that meetings have become virtual meetings we are missing factory visits frankly my view is that when you go see when a when a ceo or cfo comes to your office they have a ready made presentation they know what to talk when you visit the company they are not there with the ready made presentation so i think that that discussion becomes more fruitful when you go to a factory the guy who is working in the factory is a worker the supervisor the factory manager has no interest in market cap or nothing they give you the facts a ceo and cfo will tell you what you like to hear they know a factory manager will give you the facts when you go in a factory there are boards where the production numbers are there you actually see trucks you know you can make out what is itna bada factory hai truck aa raha hai ja raha hai raw material is there finished good is there you see the boxes so it, it's a very very different kind of a thing and i think all this we have learned by making mistakes by losing money and by experience i think the best way of learning apart from your courses is to make losses and <laughs> that would be the biggest <laughs> biggest fees you know because you learn from experience Uh, so i think it's 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 fun the good thing about our profession sanjeev you know is that you learn every day you make mistakes every day you learn every day but one rule which we have is you cannot make the same mistake again roz naya mistake karo bas koi problem nahi you can't repeat the mistake because every mistake costs money and other mm. thing is uh, it's very dynamic sectors which were great yesterday might not survive today you know you see multiplexes they were full before covid and now it's hope and we have all got used to watching movies on netflix and amazon of the world suddenly the business model has changed or even you know logically if i had to meet sanjeev bajaj i had to travel to delhi you know take a morning flight meet stay in delhi come the next day you know it was a 1 lakh rupee cost for me uh, you know now the airlines are suffering the hotels are suffering we are meeting virtually so earlier we had this option but we had not you know made up our mind to use it now this compulsion has become a habit we now know that it is it is used to it or even electric vehicles i always say this if electric vehicles were to become mainstream and they will become mainstream i'll give an example you know we used to have tvs which was like this huge we had picture tubes and all suddenly in 2 3 years picture tubes vanished Maker of picture tube just vanished. I think if electric vehicles were to become mainstream, what will happen to the you know engine manufacturers? I'm telling you basic. What will happen to the carburetor manufacturer or the exhaust system manufacturer? There is no smoke. You don't need a carburetor in an electric vehicle. So I think you know this is very interesting, and I think that is where in-house research, a good team, experienced team, uh, on the ground and reading and analyzing becomes very important. very well said uh, uh sunil very very well said so there is a question very interesting question by uh, harijan mr harijan das you know he is asking uh, which is again a basic question but he is asking can you suggest save monthly income that people are facing i am assuming he may be a retiree or is talking on behalf of retirees with the deterioration of the bank and the nbfc's uh, house uh, interest rates so in the interest rates in indian economies are following so people who are just investing yeah. in debt they are looking at their uh, returns falling and uh, you know although this recent decision the small saving interest rates was uh, 
taken back because they, but all of us know that was due to the West Bengal and Assam election. But the whole future is clear that the interest rates will fall in India. So in a falling interest rate, a person who's dependent on fixed income or who's dependent on interest for his livelihood, what does he do? So I think uh, I really, you know, sympathize with, uh, uh, you know, the the uh, aged uh, population of our country, uh, largely because we don't have a very systematic, uh, you know, old age pension scheme like uh, a lot of other countries have. There are some schemes, but by and large, uh, you know, old uh, Indians are left to, to, you know, fend for themselves and depend on their savings. Uh, I remember earlier, you know, people used to say that, uh, you know, if you have one crore rupees in saving, then you will be assured of one lakh rupees a month as as monthly income. And that was the yardstick. Now that one lakh has become 50,000. And on the other end, the costs, which maybe were 50,000 at that point of time per month, have become one lakh. So, you know, uh, it's, it's a very, very uh, serious kind of an issue, particularly for uh, the retirees who don't have, uh, you know, uh, uh, children who can take care of them. Um, I think it's a serious thing. Having said that, uh, it highlights a lot of things for people who are still working and will retire at some point of time. So we should learn from them and start having a diversified portfolio, which also has some growth assets like equity, so that when they retire, they have a bigger pool uh, because you will require a much bigger pool when you retire uh, as the interest rates are only going to fall. For people who already have uh, retired, I think things are going to be very tough. But I can only suggest that, you know, uh, don't put everything in equity markets just because you need higher income. Because, you know, you also need regular income. So I think based on your age, you will have to take the help of your financial planner and have maybe a 20-25% exposure to equity, 75% maybe will be still with fixed income because you need a monthly kind of a thing and try to see or you know make a make a plan where at least your annual return can be at least 9-10 percent uh, you know that would be my suggestion yeah so Sunil I fully agree with you because you know one I think anybody who's looking at a career if you can't do CA or CFA please become a CFP because I think the future for planners is very very good and I see that it, the work being done by International College of Financial Planning, 85% pass rate. So whether it is due to the lockdown and the cheating in the lockdown, but we have never seen this type of pass rates or it is an amazing work. So sorry, you know, I don't want to be questioned by them. Maybe they're doing an amazing work in teaching and 85% people are clearing. So please do this because advisors are going to be the future and especially in the falling interest rate. And for the senior citizen, look, guys, you may be at 60, 65, or even 70, but still you, will, you are going to need your money over 10, 15, 20 years. So keeping all your money in debt is also not a good option. So I feel that even if you are above 60 or 65, keep a part of your allocation in equity because part of this money needs to last 15 years, 20 years. And that is good enough for time for you to have. So, but maybe you can choose to be more conservative. You can be choose choose to the be in the top nifty 50 stocks or even, even a more concentrated portfolio of blue chip stocks where you have lesser volatility and maybe a little lesser growth. But so you always, even if you are above 60 today, equity needs to part, be part of every portfolio. Also, there are a lot of these good schemes by now insurance company, which are called annuity plans. So these are immediate annuity plans. They are not insurance. So since they come from insurance, people get confused and they get lost. These are, these are annuity plans, which are aimed to give you a X amount of income, which is seven and a half, eight percent income over the next 15 years, 20 years. So you can evaluate them and make them as a part of your portfolio because you're assured of that income coming in for 15 to 20 years. Another things which I recommend to a lot of clients today, you have, if you're less than 70, 
then you have plans, term plans, which give you protection up to the age of 99, which are almost like a family legacy plan. So you don't have to keep all your investments and save your investments. Okay, I want to give it to my children. I want to give it to my grandchildren. You can actually buy a life insurance for your children and a grandchildren to give the legacy you wanted to give them. And you can use the money to live a better life for yourself. Now, this is something I have recommended to even very close of people in my own family that look, buy an insurance if you can get it. And today cost is quite reasonable, quite low given the competitive. It has gone up due to COVID, but still it is quite reasonable. And at least it frees up your capital to be spent on you. And you are still able to give that legacy, which is our Indian method, mindset. I want to leave something for my next generation. It is amazing. So, and you can do that and at the same time, uh, you can achieve it. So uh, now, uh, Sunil, next question is, there is a Bharat Bhai. He is asking a question that what is the next story? Is it chemical, pharma or infra? How would you like to take that and answer that? No, so, you know, uh, frankly, uh, uh, one is uh, on a lighter note again, you know, all investors want to know the next story. Uh, though they have missed all the past stories because they are always looking at stories. So, frankly, when you are investing, have a diversified portfolio. Don't get uh, sucked into stories uh, because that might work or not work. So, you know, whatever I say might work or not work. Uh, so, take it with a pinch of salt. But I do believe that the way we are living today, and more so post-COVID last one year, the way we are working, the way we are studying, the way we are consuming, the way we are shopping, the way we are entertaining ourselves, I think it's very clear that digital is going to be a part of our life. You know, we have an investment in a company which is into music. I remember when I was young, we used to have cassettes. And you know, if Sanjeev was my friend and Sanjeev had 20 cassettes, what I used to do was borrow from him and record it and, and consume music. Then we had CDs and then we had so on and so forth. Now we are consuming even music on digital platforms. We don't need to go to a shop. We are buying everything on digital platform. We are watching each other on digital platform. We are entertaining ourselves on digital platform. You know, everything is turned digital. I think stocks are expensive. Unfortunately, in India, we are too liberalized. You know, people complain that we need more liberalization. I think we are too liberalized. We missed out investing in Flipkart and Ola and Baiju's of the world. Because we were too liberalized. You see Chinese investors, they have been invest they have been able to invest in Alibaba and Tencent and so on and so forth. Anyway, doesn't matter. There will be a lot of opportunities to come up. Some of these companies, when they come up for listing, might be expensive. I don't know. But you know, whenever you get an opportunity to buy directly or indirectly, good, long-lasting digital plays which have a great business model and which you yourself are using it. I think you will you will uh, definitely make returns. And you know, one thing which is a little bit away from this, Sanjeev, is that I have seen that the best investments are investments which are very logical. So you know, when you started opening an account in an HDFC bank, you knew that this bank is going to gain market share. Or when you started ordering pizza, you knew that Jubilant Foodworks is going to have a great year. Or you know, so on and so forth. You know, I think a lot of these investments are are very logical. I'll, I'll just give a small example. I've, I've uh, mentioned it earlier. You know, 1997 is when my son was born. I was a very small, ordinary guy, and you know, he was born in a big hospital. And the doctor gave me a, a chit that you know I need these three injections. And at that time, hepatitis B was very prevalent. And I went with 100 rupees in my pocket to a to a uh, you know pharmacy. Injection dena. And he said 10,500. I got the shock of my life, you know. So I went next day because I did not have money that time and there was no credit cards and all which was used that time. I paid him 10,500. I saw on the bottle, it was made by SKF, which became Glexo Pharma. I said, if every kid has to be given this 10,500 rupees injection, you know, you better buy the stock. So I bought 100 shares only because that was the only money I had. And, you know, my whole hospitalization cost. I recovered in three months. You know, so a lot of lot of these trends which you see uh, for the future, you can actually experience yourself. You don't need you know anyone. You know, it's all basic. Uh, it was just off the pocket uh, of the topic, but uh, I, uh, I would say that uh, digital still has a long way to go as far as investments. Very well said. You know, the, when you start investing in stocks on mutual funds, and you should see even in mutual funds what are the underlying 
stocks or even a PMS, what are the underlying stocks you are investing in. And then start learning about companies. So when you come across their products, you can see how they're doing. Or at least for all of us who are regular investors, we also are very observant what is happening in the market. A lot of the stocks I buy or, you know, I do a lot of startup investing. And I, you know, and the whole journey for me starts like I look at a startup, I enjoy their product and I reach out to them. Okay, look, guys, I want to buy stocks in you or I want to buy a share in you because I like what, what you're doing. The other day I saw somebody has done a fantastic job and, uh, you know, he had closed his seed funding and he's now in going for the next round. I said, I want to be a part of your journey. And I will help you in this journey, but I want to be a part because I really like the product and I really like the delivery. So, you know, so point is that it, I think, opens up a lot of this thing. There's an amazing question by Kamesh, which is uh, Rane, which is how to deal with or invest in the growth stocks. Now, this growth versus value question has been going on for some time. So, uh, Sunil, if you can answer that. Sure. No, I think it is very interesting. But, you know, Sanjeev, uh... I would say that investors and prospective investors misunderstand the definition of growth. What is growth? A growth stock would be something which grows significantly higher than the economy. At least I presume that that would be the definition of growth. I don't think every FMCG company or every IT company or every pharma company will be a growth stock. So my perspective is, and we have written a note which was uh, very well uh, read, though it was a little controversial, which was titled Bubble in Quality. You know, a company which is growing at 10% per annum cannot be trading at ATP, you know, bottom line. And I don't subscribe to the, to the theory that buy quality at any price, you'll always make money. I think there will be phases of 5, 10, 15 years where you will end up making no money. We had that scenario in the U.S. Uh, where it was, you know, the the, uh, the I think the super 50 stocks, which they used to call it in mid 70s. We had it in India where Hindustan River gave no return for 10 years. We are having this now in ITC, which has given no return for the uh, last five, six years. So I think you buy quality, you pay a price which justifies the future cash flows you are going to get from that company. You know, so when we wrote the note in October 2019, the market cap of Nestle and Hindustan Lever put together was six and a half lakh crores. And they were making 7,000 crores in profits. The market cap of all steel, metal, cement and building material companies put together was only 75,000 crores. And they were also making 7,000 crores of profit. And in the last 13, 14 months, the seven and a half lakh crores of Nestle and Hindustan Lever have stayed there. That 75,000 crores has become 2 lakh crores. So it's not that I'm trying to praise ourselves. What I'm trying to say is that there is a price for every stock and every asset class. You cannot buy a 10% growth company at ATP market. You know, and you cannot have a 15-18% compounding stock trading at 5 p market. And I think that is what at least our view is. You know. Yeah. So very well answered, Sunil. This also answers a lot of questions that people are asking, like Pankaj Ghakar is asking a question, do I invest in mutual funds, PMS or direct? Now, this is a question that comes and, you know, I think what Sunil has answered comes automatically. See, a value of a qualified professional is immense. So even if you are paying half a 1% for them, that's my belief. It's a great value that you are getting. A good advisor is a very important part of the journey. It is all a fallacy. Okay, you know, today you have these apps which says that you will save 30 lakh rupees in the next 20 years, provided you don't go with your advisor. Please understand, will you remain invested in the right stocks for those 30 years or not, or 20 years or not? Well, would, who's there when there is going to be the next crash to tell you, hey, look, guys, don't worry. Or whenever you have any question or when something like, the Templeton issue that was happening or there is any news which is coming out in the market. So you need to have somebody who you can discuss uh, these things with. It is very, very important. So uh, uh, I will also Sunil, like you to answer, you know, mutual funds, PMS versus direct. What, what do you feel about that? So see, you know, I think direct is something which is uh, very tough. 
um, I would just give you a perspective that if you're investing uh, in a mutual fund or a PMS structure, you are giving your money to professionals whose only work from morning to evening is managing that money. Uh, you know, they have resources in terms of a team. They have resources in terms of the constant interaction they have with multiple analysts on the sell side. They have resources of reaching out to companies, attending analyst meets and so on and so forth. And they also have the resources because it's a full time work for them to be tracking what is happening globally. I think if, if you are an equity investor and individual equity investor, uh, unless you are sure about you being able to do all this, I think you will end up uh, a lot of times on the wrong side. Uh, as far as mutual funds and PMS is concerned, frankly, you know, it's up to the investor. Uh, mutual funds are great instruments. Uh, I have seen uh, mutual funds very closely, having worked in that industry for 15 years. It has uh, great tax benefits, great uh, uh, ease of getting in and getting out, though I would say that you should not get out, but still there is an ease, very simple product to understand and very, very good uh, by and large uh, professional uh, you know, portfolio managers. Uh, PMS and AF, obviously, you need to be a high net worth individual because of the minimum restrictions. It adds to your returns, but obviously, you know, you also have to have a clear perspective on the person who is going to manage your money and the method in which the money is being managed. Because you don't want to have a scenario where in good markets you do well, but in challenging markets, which is what we saw between 2017 to 2020, you end up losing 50, 60 percent. So I would say for retail investors, nothing better than mutual fund. Uh, for an HNI, maybe a mix of of uh, you know uh, PMS slash AIF and mutual funds. But at the same time, please take uh, advice of uh, a financial planner because a financial planner will understand your risk appetite and also uh, your horizon of investment and will be able to guide you much better. Uh, in terms of uh, a long-term creation planning. Yeah, and, uh, you know, let me say that uh, the questions are fantastic. And Sunil, I can go, uh, we are above, uh, out, <laughs> above time, but I'm very amazed by the quality of people who have come in today and asking the question because the, the quality of questions are simply phenomenal. So thank you guys for taking out time and being here. But we can only do one question. So that question I'll pick up is on the global liquidity. That there is a lot of talk about this global liquidity pushing up the stock markets. What do you feel about it? And how do we identify when this liquidity is moving out? So what are the right indicators uh, for it? And finally, about uh, Bacchus PMS, what's your fund? Uh, you know, how, do, how does a person invest in it? People have this question, 50 lakhs is a huge entry barrier. So is there a way that you can do, uh, you know, limited call where a person can commit 50 lakhs but come over one year or any other innovative way of getting in? So, you know, if you can answer a little bit of those questions, Sunil. So one is on the liquidity front. Yes, you know, there is absolutely no doubt that central banks across the world have uh, printed a lot of money, has pumped in a lot of money. Uh, and we are seeing that, you know, uh, Hindi mein, 90% of your problems get sorted by money. Uh, you know, so I think central banks have followed that and they have pumped in a lot of money. Now, when it is going to be sucked out, I think it's a million dollar question. But we have the last crisis, which was Lehman crisis, as, a, as an example before us. So, you know, Lehman crisis also, uh, central banks across the world pumped in a lot of money. Uh, US also printed a lot of money. It took them almost 11, 12 years to slowly you know, bring it back to normal. Unfortunately, COVID happened and they had to start the cycle again. There is absolutely clarity in our mind that this period of uh, ample liquidity is continue at least for the next three, four years because the world is still grappling with constant lockdown, opening up, uh, things being not normal. Uh, and therefore, no central banks can afford to tighten it immediately. However, let me just add one thing here. You know, we always get paranoid. This, there was this term called taper tantrum. Every three months, we learn a new term. Even I was not knowing the full meaning till I Googled it. And I'm very sure most of you would have done it. I think this taper tantrum does not work. And in fact, if you go back between 2003 to 2008, which was the biggest bull run uh, of all times globally, I'm not talking about India, globally, 
interest rates in us in fact went up from 2.5% to 6.5% in that time frame and the markets kept on going up so one factor is not going to decide whether the markets are going to go up or go down over a period of time okay on a day to day basis you might take a call 1.7% ho gaya bech do 1.6% ho gaya le lo but over the medium and long term one factor is not going to impact uh, that much only thing i can say is that be very clear in your asset allocation if you are if you are advised to put 40 50% of your wealth in equity don't make it 150% don't borrow and invest because you want to become warren buffett the next day i think that is a catastrophe as far as the backus is concerned uh, you know we are a small outfit uh, we have two afs which we unfortunately are sh shut we have a pms where the regulations uh, basically have 50 lakhs as the minimum thing Uh, there is an option of of uh, uh, systematic investment plan, but the regulation says that first you have to have fifty lakhs, and then you can keep on topping up with uh, with uh, small uh, things. You know, let us see. I think whenever we find an opportunity where we can, uh, you know, bring uh, something in front of you uh, with a with a lower, uh, you know, uh, uh, value to start with. we would be more than happy to do it i can only tell you that the second innings of me uh, is more towards uh, you know enjoying the process towards following the passion and towards ensuring that you remember me even after i'm not a portfolio manager <laughs> really very well said uh, sunil so i know we are above time so let me just uh, give a couple of things uh, so guys uh, as i said ki look uh, there are a lot of people who have questioned on the issues they have faced with their some of their wealth managers yes that's exactly there and you have to be knowledgeable otherwise if you are too naive people will take you for a ride so that's why we have created this fantastic program you can check it out at befintastic.com as i have said our aim is not to make money if you don't like it what you are doing first week you get 100% of your money back there will be no questions asked so uh, please do look at it and uh, sunil one last question the lot of people who are saying i who can't don't have 50 lakhs at the moment or who have 5 lakh rupees they are asking give a give them five stock tips you know i think and that's only fair you know you are here tell them about five stocks that you feel are going to give a fantastic returns yeah. in the next 5 years so at least add well let's add value to everybody's yeah. life you know even if they can't come in into a backers or they can't afford a good wealth manager so i i i am unfortunately constrained because i am a regulated entity uh, and the first thing which we would like is full compliance so i am very very sorry about it uh, what i can i can share is that uh, you know one be positive on the country if you are positive you will always make returns second is deal and trust the best people so do more research in identifying the people you want to work with and do less research on the stocks because that is what those people will be doing it i think third is don't get overawed by day to day noise you know i used to travel in local trains and local train mein ek ghanta hai na time pass karna padta tha because i used to stay in malad and i used to go all the way to chajgir so what do you do you know you talk the easiest thing to do is talk either bollywood politics or stocks and in 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 local trains everyone was an expert in stocks because you know <laughs> so get away from that tip baji uh, you know uh, because uh, in in the quest of of uh, making short term money you will end up losing in also becoming too i would say fearful you will end up losing the opportunity to buy so in march last year again a little bit long answer people said that uh, you know equities will not survive there were experts on tv which said that 90% of the companies would not survive and our answer was very clear agar aap zinda rahoge to equity mein paisa banega aur agar aap zinda nahi rahoge to equity mein ke fixed income mein kya farak padta hai you know because covid time no one even knew whether we would be alive after two months you know that was a kind of fear so i think sometimes just be a little logical in terms of stocks unfortunately i can't but what i can say our portfolios at least to our investors are available you can see our holdings and take a call accordingly so thank you guys for uh, being here today and thank you sunil for a fantastic talk i'm sorry we were not able to take all the questions there are a lot of questions on etf 
and how to select the right ETF. I promise you we'll take this up. So fantastic talks are going to happen every alternate uh, Tuesdays. So please do take us, uh, take this time to join. You're uh, getting a chance to interact with some of the best brains in the industry, the best brains in India. And we, we are calling some of the best international brains also will be calling. So, uh, you know, learn from this. And at the end of the day, these are the type of people you want to hear, you want to follow rather than the person you meet on the local train or a person who's trying to push because he's got some uh, stake in some uh, or he's trying to push up a penny stock. So please be very, very careful, invest in good companies, uh, you know, be cautious, learn and to make the right steps and wishing all of you a very wealthy future. So thank you, Sunil, and thank you, everyone, for joining the talk today. Thanks a lot. Bye.